But there's a bystander standing nearby a switch. The bystander can flip the switch, turn the trolley onto a sidetrack where it will kill one. Here's the question. Is it permissible for the bystander to flip the switch, killing one but saving five? Now, similar setup, next case. A bystander can push a heavy man in front of the trolley, killing him but saving five. Is it permissible for the bystander to push the heavy man? So when we put this problem up on the web, based on the large sample size of people from all over the world, what we found is the following. About 90% said it was okay for the bystander to flip the switch, but only 10% of the people said it was permissible for the heavy man to be pushed in front of the trolley. Now the question is why? Here we have what's looking like fairly coherent judgments across the population. Why is this a justifiable distinction? First of all, we can rule out things like gender. No difference between male and women. No difference in level of education. No difference in age. No difference in nationality. And no difference in things like religion or ethnicity based on the sample we have. What should we conclude from this? Well, one conclusion is from dilemmas like this, certain forms of permissible harm because what you're admitting to here is situations when it's okay to harm somebody seem to cohere across culture, giving some credence to the idea of a universal principle that may guide our judgments about harm. And now the question becomes, what about justifications? If the Kantian view, where principles and reason and rationality drive our judgments is right, people should derive what the principle is here. In contrast, if it's more of an intuitive view, either emotional or the kind of grammar that I've been speaking about, people should not be able to derive what the underlying principle is. Well, here's one principle that actually explains those two cases. It's called the principle of double effect. It goes back at least to Thomas Aquinas, and it goes something like this. The act itself is not wrong, flipping a switch, whereas pushing somebody is wrong. So we can already begin to distinguish based on the action itself. The consequences of the act, say five, outweigh the bad. But that's true of both of them, so that can't be appealed to for a distinction. The act, flipping the switch, pushing the man, is intended to bring about the positive consequences, say five, not the negative ones. But critically in four, the negative consequences, kill one, are not the means to the positive one. That's true for the bystander case, but it's not true for the heavy man. The heavy man is the means to the end, and that should be blocked if the principal double effect is in operation. So we ask people, you said the bystander was permissible, but the heavy man case was not, why? When we do that, only a very small fraction of people actually give coherent explanations. Most people say, I have no idea. Or they give conflicting reasons, like, well, I, you, you, you can't just kill somebody. Well, you just did kill somebody over there. Um, you know, favorite answer of, of all time, shit happens. Appeal to some divine creation, whatever. Most people don't know. Well, the problem with those cases and the problem with cases like these is there's lots of differences between these. So if the science is going to be interesting, you have to reduce these dilemmas, leaving only a small number of things that could account for a difference. So here's a key test of the principle of double effect. Here's our bystander again. Here comes the trolley. There's now a little loop track, okay? So if the bystander flips the switch, it wipes out that fat guy, but he stops the trolley. Now, of course, if there is no fat guy, then it just goes along and kills the five, okay? So he is crucial for the saving of the five. This is now intentional battery as a means. The second case, there's a heavy weight. It's the weight that's going to stop the trolley, but there just happens to be a guy in front of the weight. Now, flipping the switch, you kill somebody, but as a foreseen side effect. Okay? So one is intended, one is foreseen, both are impersonal. Do people see a difference? The answer is yes, whereas 52% say the first case is permissible, more people say the second case is permissible. People are making a distinction on the judgment level between intentional harm and a foreseen consequence. Do they come up with a principle of effect? That's all that's left here. They do not. So, only about 10% of people we ask actually come back with the principle double effect. Most people, again, have no idea, appeal to an emotion, a hunch, or simply give incoherent answers. So again, we now have a situation where both the Kantian and the human in the Arnakia, because there's no emotional difference between these two cases. Both rely on the cause of the action, how it's being driven. 
So these, together with many other dilemmas, are leading to the view that there really is something like a grammar of our moral decision making, a, potentially a universal moral grammar with variation across culture simply set by switches in the same way that there are universal principles underlying language with variation set again by local details of the local native language.